Hello, and welcome back to the Victoria's Wool Podcast. I'm Victoria. I'm a knitwear designer living in the Pacific Northwest of Washington State. It's a beautiful, sunny, kind of like late winter, early spring kind of day. Uh, so I don't wanted to record before the light disappeared. So it's still pretty dark. We're about to hit daylight savings on Sunday, so it will be lighter later and it may be easier to record in the afternoon and stuff, but I do have a, quite a lot of things to show you or things to get through. I haven't recorded in a long time. Um, I house a lot for friends and so I'm just not here a lot of the time and I sometimes record at other people's places, but it does mean that I have to have all the stuff that I want to show you and so I have to think ahead of time and I just didn't have a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on, so I didn't do it. So I think it's been about a month. Last episode, I talked about the four first sweaters I ever made and why they don't really work for me and why they never get worn. And um, that's some good feedback from that episode. So I want to keep showing you older, finished projects, but I also want to update you on my whips. So I have like a little bit of a, of a lot of things just to talk about. I would have hoped I would make more progress on my current stuff in a month, but I kind of didn't. Well, my cloth bags here, I, I can open up for you. I made some progress. It'll look like I did something to you, but it's been a long time, so <laughs> I should have made more. Um, I just have a hard time when I add more stuff onto my plate of continuing with things that I already had going on, so I'm sure everybody can relate to that. Okay, so the exciting finished project is my camp pullover. This is an Amy Christopher's savory knitting pattern. This lovely raglan detail that I think is very easily to, easy to see in the pictures of the pattern, but it's so much prettier in real life. It's very, very nice. And, um, finished with twisted rib. I have worn this quite a few times. It's a perfect fit right now and I do need to block it. I think it'll just bloom this wool and alpaca yarn really nicely. Um, and maybe I'll do an Instagram video when I do this, which is I lay it on the blocking mats dry and then I measure like how wide is the neck and how wide is the bust here and how wide is the body at the bottom and like how long are the sleeves and then when it gets wet I have all those dry measurements to go back to to make sure that it didn't like take on water and expand too much because then I can pin it to those dry measurements and I should get the same size sweater. So if, if a, a yarn is maybe going to expand a little bit when it gets wet you can dry measure it. Me dry, you can dry measure it to make sure that it doesn't grow. I think that will work in most cases. Um, there's even like, probably talked about this before, where if you've got a piece that you've gotten wet and it's expanded a lot, you can actually pin it to the measurement you want and then like allow there to be folds on the blocking mats of like, you've scooched it in, scooch, scooch, and then let, let it dry like not flat. And it will actually pull back in. It may not flatten out 100% of the way, although I have had that happen magically, like it just, it readjusts to the size it's been pinned to. So that's sometimes if you've overblocked something, you can block it again and give it another shot of like seeing if you can bring it in a little bit. And that has worked for me every single time. Sometimes it just dries with like a little bit of wave, but it, um, wool has the magic ability to do that. So anyways, I like it a lot. Maybe I'll wear it next time. Um, this is the Ultra Alpaca, which is 50% wool, 50% alpaca, and it's wonderful. I highly recommend, highly recommend this. And I, I don't think I've used it for a sweater before, so I was really excited to just to wear it. And it does have really nice drape to it, and not all sweaters have that. So it's nice to make something that I'm fine with repeating and making the same things with slightly different details or like slightly different yokes again and again, but it's nice when you have a sweater that like fits you a little bit different because I'm thinking that that one's going to get a lot of wear. So, okay. Happy with that. I do have another Amy Christopher's 
pattern Felix, which is a very popular pattern of hers, and I'm wearing it right now, actually. So it's Islandic Wool Month in March, um, as dictated by Colt Erin and Wool. That's their kind of monthly, or they do it once a year, but um, that's the month that they've decided is their Islandic Wool Month, so they promote their um, Islandic designs and yarns that they sell. You can go on their website and learn more about it. But it has these like little chevrons made out of eyelets and that's how you make the raglan. And that's how you expand the sweater. I made this one, which fits me very nicely. And then um, I'll button it up and you can see it buttoned. Then I made a rusty orange one, red one. And I love that color, but it's a little too big because I, um, this is what I think happened. All we can do is like make a best guess, right? With some of this wooly stuff. Um, this is an undyed colorway. I don't remember which number it is. It's a lopey, of course. Um, it's an undyed colorway and the rusty red was a, um, probably acid dye. And so those two yarns, let lopey yarns, I would have thought had the same gauge. So I didn't finish this one and I didn't even cross my mind that I should gauge swatch again. But I made the exact same size. I mean, the same needles and everything. And oh, is it too much? It's too big. <laughs> and it's big enough that it looks really like sloppy. And wool sweaters don't have to fit well. They keep you warm. And I have lots of sweaters that I don't like how they look, but I do wear them occasionally and it is worth keeping them. But I really wanted it to look like this one. <laughs> And I really like that color. And so I've just kind of packed it away with the intention of ripping it out and knitting it again with the same color. So eventually I will do that's on my like long-term list. And I'm sure I've talked about it before. Anyways, I bring up this sweater because I made another one. And because I'm going to show you all of my Islandic sweaters today. This is going to be sort of like a whip update and talking about the Islandic sweater that I made that I love because it's Islandic wool month. Um, here it is. This is Felix in the pullover version. So I've made two cardigans, but I have never made a pullover before. So I did finish the body. I probably had this cast on when I recorded last, but I can't remember because it was so long ago. I'm almost done with the sleeve. I'm using peace fleece. I'm not using Lopi. It was written with Lopi. It's a great pattern with Lopi. I think it took me using the smallest size, five or six balls, which is really great because this yarn is very inexpensive. So it's a very, very um, affordable sweater to make. But this is Peace Lease, which is milled by Harrisville, I believe in Pennsylvania. Anyways, this is Morning Dove, one of my favorite colors. I've had this yarn for a couple years and really wanted to use it on something special. And it just sort of clicked with me. I saw someone else knit one with peace fleece on a web on a podcast episode and I was like I have that yarn I have that pattern I will cast on right now um I did try it on the other day and it's a little too short just barely barely and I need to extend I think the stock net and not the rib um it fits very similarly to the camp and I really like the way that fits. It feels like needs. It's like the ribbing for this is how it is for me. And I you can adjust. It's like the the amount of ease I chose for my size, or the amount of ease the small size gives on my body, allows there to be like this like pulling in of the ribbing at the bottom of the hem, and then this like fold of the sweater fabric, in a way that's very flattering for me. And, um, so because I just did that with the camp, I'm going to try to get, and then there's a little bit of a fold. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Like when you see somebody wearing a sweater, it's not necessarily form fitted, but it's not a boxy shape. And there's just like a little bit of like extra fabric just around the hips. And so that's going to, to achieve that, I need a little bit more length in the body, which is a bummer, but I think I knit this body in like a day or something. So it's not a huge sacrifice. This is pretty, pretty um, big yarn. And the other thing to note is that I 
I think I had this sweater. I'm hoping that I detailed what I did to the collar already because I don't remember the details, but I know that I knit it a little bit narrower because I was worried about it being too wide and I was also worried about coming up here. And so I did some things to it <sighs> that I'm hoping I recorded already because I couldn't tell you exactly what it was. I did more short rows than I was supposed to and I had fewer stitches than I was supposed to. And I think I did an extra, yeah, I had an extra um, chevron and then I went even a little bit further, I think. I think it says four. For my size, I had four. I added a fifth one and then I knit and stuck in it and didn't increase for a little bit. Anyways, this sleeve. So trying on the sleeve, I found I did not need to decrease right away, which is often common with seat, with me for sleeves. I always try a sleeve on, cast on, knit as directed for a little while, and then try it on and see how it's fitting my bicep because I don't want it to be too small. Nobody wants a thick, wooly, like, sausage arm. So I just started decreasing, like, all the way down here. And I think this is, like, my forearm. I just decreased, I think, a couple times. And I might just leave it at that. Do you love before you block that you get these, like, terrible, like, <laughs> I always find those funny. Um, and maybe that's, that's got to be the way that it is for everybody. It just isn't... If it's gradual only, I guess, if you block it, but it's always funny to me. Um, yes. I pretty much knit straight. And um, I gotta try it on again and see how close I am. And then I gotta finish one sleeve and um, redo the body, I think, and then I'll do the other sleeve. So I could finish this in, like, easily in, like, a day or two. But I really, I guess, I've gotta figure out how to, like, find the motivation <laughs> I just haven't been knitting very much. Just been having too much other stuff to do. Okay. Excuse me. What do I want to show you now? Did I think I don't think I had this cast on. I don't think I did. It's so hard. I need to record more regularly because then I'll remember what I did and and um, I don't have to guess. Okay, so this is a Knitter's Academia sock. I've got all these Knitter Academia socks hanging out here. This is the original colorway. I've shown them on many episodes. They came out beginning of February. Did a Christmas pair, which I still haven't woven the ends in or blocked. And I am one sock into this wonderful black and gray pair, which I really love. So <laughs> knitting my fifth pair. Cause I just can't stop. It's such a nice pattern. And I have all this, oh yeah, I was gonna grab those. I have all this stroll tweed. So this is, I think, Lavender Fields, I think is this one. And um, Barley, Barley. Lavender and yellow, which I would never have picked, but I got all these colors and they just like spoke to me, I guess. So I'm really excited about that. It's very subtle. It's nice that it's sunny because you can really see the yellow in the in the natural light. Um, but that's very such a happy happy sock. I'm gonna be really excited to wear those. Um, and I made some progress on sock number two of this guy. I just sat down one day. I was like, okay, you gotta finish all the stripes of the foot on this one and as much as you can on this one because this is just going on for too long um I didn't quite make it because I ran out of where I was staying I didn't have the down heather so I had to go get some do you ever do that where you're like working with multiple colors and you cut the wrong one because I was working on this sack last night started a black stripe and then I was like oh yeah I'm striping so I'll like cut color I'm done with it and then I was like no wait I'm not supposed to cut the main color so when that's an extra two ends I'll have to weave into the 25 that are on each sock anyways um so yeah lots of little linen bags for all my projects I like these bags a lot they keep my yarn from getting tangled together okay uh I did make some progress on this 
This is a slow. This is a, these projects like the because I don't give up on things or I don't put stuff away. Like I don't have a lot of projects. I mean, in comparing to myself to how I used to be when I had just I just cast on whenever and I don't even know how many I had. Um, which I kind of stopped doing and it slowly took me over a few years of being really good to be more disciplined, um, to get myself to this place where I, if I'm not going to work on something, I should rip it out or I don't start things that feel sort of like whims most of the time. I still do that occasionally for fun, but this is a Claire de Lune sock by the petite knitter and, um, I did cast it on, I think a year and a half ago, knit a little bit, found it to be too small. And I was going to pick it back because it's something I'm knitting with my friend Jennifer. So I was going to pick it back up and we finally did. And she's done with one sock and I am still working on the boot. <laughs> so it's beautiful. The other sock will be the opposite. The background color will be blue and the, all the little details will be yellow. So that's super fun, which is sort of what I did here with Knitters Academia, where I chose the a different color for the mane on each sock, which is just really fun. What was I gonna say? So I did, I did a little bit. I did a little bit. Maybe like, I think I doubled it. I think I'm also ready. Oh no, I did add the heel flap line in. I did. This is an afterthought heel, which I haven't done in a long time. Um, yeah, so should finish that. <laughs> I'm like, when is that going to happen? Right now I got to finish that Felix and finish both of these pairs of socks. And then I can put my energy towards finishing the Claire de Lunes. I do have this. I don't think I've made any progress on it. This is the gentle lopey, but we're talking about Atlantic wool this month. So this is a very deep yoke. It's going down like almost to my waist. No, nah, not quite. I have a long waist. But this is by Melody Hoffman, the Gentle Lopi, um, two strands of Pluto Lopi, which is the unspun wool that comes in a plate. And this is a fun. This is going to be a long, I have a lot of it. I, I got, a, I don't know, like 11 plates or something, just in case. I'm really tall, so I figured I'd just have lots and lots of extra. Has um, yarn over raglan detail too. And it smells good. I, it took me a lot of effort to get to the split because there's a lot of stitches going on here. These arms are quite, quite oversized. So it was just a lot of effort. I think it was a point where I was like, I'm almost there. And then like a week later, I actually finished it. Um, so I'm not going to have it. I think before it'll be really kind of too warm to wear it, but that's, that's knitting. It's for next season. We are having a very cold winter, which would be perfect for this. And I just housed that for um, friends who had a colder house than I'm used to or colder than here. So I could have used a tunic. I was fine, but I did. I definitely wore a woolly sweater. Yeah. There's like a part of me that's like, I want a warm house because I think I like warm temperatures. Like I would like a house to be like, I don't know, 76 probably, but then I'd be in a t-shirt. So I can take it down. Sometimes I've set the thermostat at like 65 so that I could wear a sweater. Okay. So I had that thought that, oh, I didn't grab the stroll tweed that I got. So since last recording, I got more, more stroll tweed from Knit Picks. Stuff is the colors. I have almost every color now. It's just so fun because it's very inexpensive. So it's easy to just get experiment and get a lot. Um, so this is the color that I'm knitting my socks out of. It's so pretty. I don't like purple, but like this spoke to me, as I said. I also did get a darker purple because I thought I was going to do um, University of Washington colors and do um, that yet the barley with this. That's the school I my university. But the lavender just looks better. I also got a couple balls of, this is marine heather. This one's pretty. And then a couple of lapis. This is a very bluey purple order. Yeah, this one's like really bright. 
Look how fun that is. It's a little less bright in real life. Isn't that funny how that happens when you record? It's not so neonic. It's a new word I just made up. Um, Atlanta Heather. I already had one, so I just got another. This one's pretty. I would have probably preferred, if I'd had two of these, I would have used them with this brighter red. That would have been a fun Christmas color. Almost not Christmassy, but I think it would have been um, a little bit more color satisfaction. I think I, I, I put my hand here like, but it's probably in my brain of like a, something that lights up when color combinations come together. That I really like and I get really excited about. Um, I'm also thinking that someday a color combination like this would be nice. Like a pretty dusty mauvey lavender with a rusty brown. I don't know what kind of thing, but I just was thinking about um, my the quilt on my bed also has is a rusty brown. So anyways, those are my only yarn acquisitions since last recording. Probably the only yarn, hopefully the only yarn I'm going to buy for quite a long time. Okay. So these are the next sweaters. These are all made with is Tex wool. They make Pluto Lopi and Let Lopi. Alaphas Lopi. Um, they make Einband, which is the fingering weight. I don't have any. I don't think I even own any of that. I'm just going to fold it and put it down a little stack for you. And I made these over a few different years, but it's, they're all relatively recent. I would say within the last five. So here's my loopy stack. Um, what did I do first? That's a good question. I should go in order. <sighs> if I can remember. I didn't look back at my notes. I know I, I said I would go back and look at what my next four sweaters were, but I didn't do that. Maybe in the future. I think it's Forager. Or is it this one? It might be this one. Anyway, I talked about the Felix already. It's the yarn that Amy Christoffers used for the pattern. So it, it's pretty perfect. And it's very, um, it's been very well worn. So it is on the inside, which we probably won't be able to tell. I will attempt to show you what's happening on the inside of this sweater. It's very flat on the inside. It's much more woolly out here than it is in here. So what's happened is it being pressed against my body has flattened the fibers out, which means it's not as itchy anymore because it's felt it to itself. <laughs> because they've worn it a lot. This is the, the Let Lopi, which is sort of the worsted um, version. It's very open gauge, the sweater and very light. And so it's warm, but it is not heavy. Some of the Lopies are heavy, um, especially knit really densely like Melody Hoffman does in her patterns. And I have two of her sweaters here. So anyways, I love this one. I would knit it absolutely again. Obviously I'm knitting it in a different yarn right now, the pullover version. So I highly recommend it um, if you live anywhere that has cold weather. And um, yeah, it's just really adjusted to my body really nicely and um, I would wear it more if I had bigger spaces to like, and I didn't have a moth problem. <laughs> so I could see all my sweaters all the time or like open a door, open a cabinet and really see them, but they kind of have to get put in plastic and put away in this other room. And so it's easy for me to forget about them. And sometimes I leave a lot, all the time. I leave a stack of current wares out on top of my hamper. And those are the sweaters I'm wearing a week or two consistently every other day or every few days I'm picking up like certain sweaters and wearing them. So that's kind of how I rotate through try to get to wear. Like I have way too many sweaters for my need, but I want them all to get, you know, some, some wear time. So this one definitely could get left out all the time or we get picked more if I remembered it. I have enough now that I forget about them. In fact, I kind of lost, I was looking for these Islandic sweaters and I lost one. 
lost one. In fact, I couldn't see it. And I'm like, well, where did it go? <laughs> where did it go? But I found it. It was, um, it was tucked away. It fell off the shelf. Sometimes I'll hear in the other room, there's a lot of yarn in bags and I'll hear like a bag fall and I'll be like, oh, <laughs> another yarn bag bit the, uh, the dust. The next one I'm pretty sure was probably Forager. So this is a Melody Huffman pattern. It's very square. Um, we're pretty, pretty close to square. It, it's a double Pluto Lopi and mohair combination. So three strands held together and um, it's a beautiful color. It's very, it's not very oversized. It's oversized, but not dramatically. So it gets a lot of wear. Um, I think I didn't like its oversizedness at first. I had to work myself into it because I don't have a lot of sweaters like this, but it's pretty light and it goes over a lot of things. And so it gets a lot of wear. It's like the best color combination too. I think this is their forest green from Iztex. And then I used bottle green, I think, from Knitting for Olive, which Melody has these exact colorways in her pattern. So it's definitely something I saw her making and had to have it too. So this is number two. And then what happened? Probably this one. So this is the rug by Junko Okamoto. It's a free pattern. She's a Japanese designer. Um, I did change a lot of things to this, but I love this sweater and it's probably my warmest. It's the thickest. So this is two, no, one strand, one strand of Alifos, I'm pretty sure, which is um, the bulky weight, lopy, and I used Oh, I don't remember the colors. That's the problem of, of pulling up old sweaters is I've forgotten. I could look it up. Maybe I'll try if I'm really good. I don't want to do it right now, but I'm recording right now. Um, so I will look it up after the fact and see if I can find it. I think it's just the black and either the, a good light gray or like a, one of those. Um, They do like an ash. They do beige. They do oatmeal. Lots of really great neutral colors. Anyways, it's got a rolled neckline and then I changed the bottom. I added some, she's a really, really great method of, of doing short rows. She has you add short rows throughout the back multiple times. So you do get more of a swoop. I don't know if it's going to show up. I think I've worn it too much. It does sit lower in the back a little bit. Um, and I think I started doing that after I knit this pattern, like, oh, this is a cool way to do it. Like you can really add a lot more length to the back if you do it over in multiple spots. Um, she has a rolled hem on hers. I have a regular, I did a twisted rib. Um, why did I do a twisted rib? I don't like one by one rib because it opens up. You can see the ladders in between the stitches too much. Um, twisted rib is still one by one and it looks really good. So I must have just decided to do that on hems and cuffs and um yeah lots of people ask me about the changes I made because um some hems are like not as appealing as others just to certain folks so it fits me pretty good I don't think I would have liked the roll it just looked like it just too was too expansive at the bottom and I wanted it to pull in just a little bit so this one gets lots of wear and on the super super cold days it's the one to reach for um, then I knit the tulip also by Melody Hoffman, like the, like the green one was her too. And this is a, whew, what did I do? This is a two strand Pluto Lopi held with mohair. And I'll have to figure out what the colorways are later. They have a golden yellow, I think from, um, in Pluto Lopi that I used. And then I used more of a mustard. The combination was really good because the the original Pluto Lopi colorway was maybe too too ketchupy or no mustard too mustardy or that's not what I mean. Yeah, I guess if you put it with like a bright red, it really looked like ketchup and mustard, and I really wanted it to be more luminescent and maybe like a little bit more sunshiny than like McDonald's yellow. But yeah, it has a lovely scallop on the bottom. Looks really good. It's more of a crop sweater on me. And I made the sleeves really long. This one hurt my hands. 
The rug also hurt my hands too because they're really dense and and this yarn is not as bouncy, not as stretchy, so it's hard on the hands because it's more towards the twine in the range of the spectrum of, of stretchiness of wool, so it's, it's harder. Might like use more arm strength um, to make them, but I just did it slower and gave myself lots of breaks. So I highly recommend this one, super cute. I would definitely knit it again. I have lots of um, Poodle Lopi I could use in different colors. A black one would be nice, but I like yellow. Yellow is happy. I haven't worn it yet this winter. I should leave it out. And then the most recent, made just last fall, was the First Light by Woodland. Woodland Knits, I'll link her Instagram and the pattern. But this is a two strands of Poodle with color work in the darker blue and then I added embroidered blue and orange on top. So I've worn this one recently on the podcast. It was really fun and it was from bottom it was a bottom up which I have done before but it had been a long time so it was fun to experiment and see how that would work out. And I did have to take the join out as I've detailed in previous episodes. And I also changed the neckline too because it was um, a twisted rib and it was just too narrow and Lopi is too itchy to wear that close, um, at least this time around. So it was beautiful, very fun project. Those are my Icelandic sweaters and obviously the, the gentle Lopi I'm working on now will add to this pile. I originally um, set out to knit a bunch of sweaters in Lopi because I was asked to do farmer's markets through the winter, I think in the end of 2018. I was just starting my design business and I was just starting to get really serious about um, managing whips and being more organized and like not just casting on all the time. And so I got a bunch of Lopi to make sweaters for a market. And I totally forgot that that was the intention. And then I, I didn't make this patterns I had in mind, totally forgot about it. And then realized that a couple years later, that I did have quite a lot of floppy sweaters now and I did wear them to market. So it was interesting that I set that goal or had that inspiration and then did it and then didn't remember <laughs> that that's what I was doing it for. But yeah, I do wear these floppy sweaters often to market. I'll wear, I have a, a wool dress in both a gray and a black from Madewell that were merino. And they kind of like hit my like top of my knees because my knees get cold. When you're outside in anywhere from 32 degrees, I think it's the coldest we've had at a market day to like, you know, 50 during the winter. It's a pretty broad range. Um, and you're standing outside for four hours and then you're like moving around and packing and setting up for an hour after and an hour before. So it's like a five to six hour time frame of being in the cold. It gets really chilly and we do have hand warmers and boot warmers and I have like a big thermos of tea that I take with me, but the sweaters are really essential. And so I wear like two to three on top of, I will wear two, one to two on top of the wool dress usually. And I wear that every every week for many months before it gets warm enough I can start wearing jeans again and go down to like one sweater <laughs> but yeah that's what I've got to share with you today I hope you're knitting on something really fun and I will be back hopefully sooner rather than later bye